Hey guys, in this chapter, we're going to talk about how to configure the network from the side of the IV addresses between my BC1 and BC2 and BC3 and my server and my router. I'm assuming here my DHCP server is not up and running yet. So I just want to do the basic setup before I go through DHCP server. Once we talk about DHCP server in the future, in the coming classes, you will configure your DHCP server and you don't have to worry about this stuff. But in general, whenever I want to set up a network, I will have my network. The first thing I have to decide about is what is the IP address for my router. Good, it's the my gateway going through to the internet to Arido or to any other provider. Usually you will choose your own IP range. So for example, in my example, I'm going to do 192.168.20. Sorry, dot 20. Dot. So this is will be my network range. And I have now all the IP addresses from number one to number 254. So my default gateway, my router gateway, the one that will let me go to the internet, of course, I'll give it number one. Good. Now, when it's come to my DSDN domain controller one, so I will give it an IP address, which is 192.168.20.2. Good. And for my second domain controller, the one that I didn't even install yet, that is coming up soon, then I will be giving it the second IP address and range, so three. Good. If I'm planning to have three or four domain controllers, I will give two, three, four, five for these domain controllers. If you are not sure, it's better to keep number two, number three, number four, number five, number six are available, and then you start your VCs numbering from number 10, for example. Good. Now, what's the default gateway? Of course, the default gateway always, always, always will be 192.168.26, sorry, dot 20, dot one. It is the IB address of your router. So whether it is in the domain controller one or in domain controller two, good, whether in BC2, BC3, all of those guys will have the same default gateway because a default gateway is the router that will let me out of my network. Good. Now, what's about the DNS? So, where is the DNS on my network? The DNS on my network is DC1. It's active. It's the domain controller one. This is where I'm going to install the DNS software in our example. If I decided in my network that the DNS will be another machine, then I will need to use that machine. But in my example, it is this machine. So for BC1 and BC2 and BC3 and the, D and the domain controller 2, the DNS has to be the IP address for the major server. So all those guys, the DNS from here, from here, from here, from here, all of them have to be to this IP address because that's the DNS that is going to give my network the DNS functionality now. Because this is what I decided. I decided I'm going to store the DNS on my network. So for all of these guys, the DNS will be 192.168.20.2. Good. So all of them will have the same DNS. Now in your example, in your own table, it will be the IP address of your domain controller, depend on the range that you are working on. So some of you, for example, will be the same range, but uh, number 50, well, sorry, 115, one of you will be 130, one of you will be 120, one of you will be 160. Because as you know, in the classroom, we decided each table will have 10 IP addresses. So, but the only difference is here. In this domain controller, the DNS should be 127.0.0.1 because that machine is going to call her own self for DNS service. She is the DNS, so the machine will talk to herself. And the IP address when you want the machine to talk to herself is 127.0.0.1 or what they call it, the loop IP address. Now here, my IP address will be 192.168.20. Whatever IP address you want to do. In your example in the lab, as we said, since I'm only giving you 10 IP addresses, you will need to put it as number four. So if your table IP address is 150, you put 154. And this one will be 155, or five in my case. And this one will be 156. That way, we don't have any IP conflict. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, 
that way you are safe good so this is the part where a lot of you are getting confused when we talk about the IP addresses in your lab in your situation the IP address for your table is 192.168.12. something that's if you are in the room 106 if you are in the other room the 113 your IP address will be 192.168.26 that's something that's something depend on your table so if you are in table 1 for example it will be 100 if you are in table 2 it will be 110 if you are table 3 it will be 120 and goes to like one one table like this every table is 10 numbers extra from the previous so that means your dns will be 192.168.12.102 and 103 the only difference there is because all of you are in the same room and all of you are using the same router your default gateway will be 192.168. Let's say 12 if you are in room 106.1. Because you remember, in our room, there is only one router. I didn't give each one of you his own separate router. So all of you will share that default gateway IP addresses. But for the DNS, you will just have your number. So it will be 200. Good. And then this will be 200. This will be 201. This will be 203. This will be 204, this will be 205. And it goes like this. So make sure you understand the IP addresses for your table because if you don't set up the IP addresses right, the DNS or the machines will not be able to communicate to the DNS and therefore they will not be able to join the machine to the domain. So right now, how I'm going to do up the setup of the IP addresses, I will go back to my virtual machine here and there. Good. So on my virtual machine, I'll have to right click, go to properties, and check the TCP IP4 on my server and set up my IP address. So based on the example that I set up for myself here, my network should be 192.168.20.2. And my default net gateway will be 192.168.20.1. And my default DNS for the server one, for the domain controller, it will be 127.001. So I set up that one here. I press OK on it later, but I'll keep it on the screen for one second so you can see it here. So the same thing I will do on BC2. Open the network internet setting. Change adapter settings. Change the network setting from here. Right click. Go to TCP IP4. And then here, what is my IP address going to be? It's going to be the number four in my series. So my series is 192.168.20.4. That is here. My subnet mask is automatically getting then 192.168.20.1. And again, my DNS, remember, it will have to be the IP address of the domain controller. So it is 192.168.20. Sorry, 168.20.2. Good. So here is my DNS. Good. I press OK. I press OK. And now the two PCs are having the same configuration, and this PC can talk to this PC. And I'll do the OK here and do the OK here. Good. Now, if I want to join the machine to the domain, I will write, go to the Explorer. Right click on this PC, go to properties. And then on this screen, I'll go to change the computer name. Of course, we will talk about change the domain, join the domain in a few minutes, but I just want to show you something. If I came up here, I'll get my server address so I see. Here is my domain name. Good. So if I put my domain name here, ode.local, and I press OK, the system will communicate with the domain and then will ask me for the domain administrator so he can join me. You see? It worked no problem at all. But if I made any mistakes configuring my network, so let's say, let's say I accidentally, when it came up to set up the DNS, good, I accidentally, instead of putting two here, I put one. So instead of putting the DNS as my server IP address, here is my server IP address, I went out and I put it as my gateway or any other IP address by mistake. So when I go here, I'll go back, okay. Now, the machine have the wrong DNS. 
Good. When I try to join the machine to the domain, oops, sorry, not from here. Right to click, properties, change, change. I will give it the domain name, order.local. When I click OK, I will get an error message saying that the domain do not exist. You see, it's taking very long time. Why? Because she is calling for the wrong DNS. The number one is not my DNS, it's my gateway. And because the DNS is not there, the machine cannot resolve the name or she cannot find the IP address. We all know that the DNS is the one that you give him the, the server name or the domain name and he give you the IP address that you have to talk to. And because of that, it's failed. I'll go back, keep it open. I'll go back, change adapter settings, go to properties, go to CCBI before, fix it, put the right DNS number. And again, guys, don't use this DNS number on your machine in the lab. This is my DNS number on my table, on my laptop. In your table, you have to follow your IP addresses that are given to you on the table. Okay? Okay? Now I can join the machine to domain. In the next presentation, I will talk about joining the machine to domain fully. I just want to make sure you guys understand how making the wrong IP address can affect you. There is one more thing that could really affect your IP address configuration. Remember, I have machine one, machine two, machine three, whatever the machine numbers is. I have to have them all on the same virtual network adapter. So my server is on the internal switch and my BC1 is on internal switch as well. Good, you remember we make we created an external switch and internal switch. If one of them is on the internal, one of them is then on the external, it's as if you are connecting them to two different switches that don't talk to each other. So the two BCs will not be able to communicate to each other. Make sure they are both on the same switch, which preferably the internal switch. Good, thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next video when we start talking about how to join the machines to the domain.